the overwhelming majority of weapons in Fallout New Vegas are designed to be lethal in one way or another. But there's one weapon that is specifically made to be non-lethal. Can you beat Fallout New Vegas with only boxing gloves? Up first, as always, about half the time, is the character name. I went with Rocky after the snail that Patrick entered into the Great Snail Race. With boxing gloves being an unarmed weapon, I drained the points from charisma and intelligence, maxed out strength and agility, and put a good amount of points into luck and endurance. The skills I chose were unarmed, obviously, repair, and lockpick. I picked Wild Wasteland for my first trait and thought for a while about whether or not Heavy Handed would be worth taking. It gives a plus 20% to unarmed and melee damage, while reducing critical hit damage for those weapons by 60%. I ended up deciding against it. Despite the fact that boxing gloves are designed to favor fatigue damage over damage damage, we don't have to go far to get our hands in the gloves, as choosing unarmed as a tag skill will result in Doc Mitchell giving us a pair of boxing gloves. They're not in the best condition, but the Ultimate Edition of New Vegas includes the Caravan DLC pack, which gives four weapon repair kits, allowing us to take the boxing gloves condition up to about 50%. I looted Doc's house, went outside, took a few practice swings at the dust, sold what I could to Chet, and met Cheyenne and her bitch behind the Prospector Saloon. I knocked the bottles off the fence like the lady wanted, but I guess that wasn't really what she had in mind. I shot them to advance the game and went back inside the saloon to talk to Trudy. At this point, I was anxious to see how useful these boxing gloves actually are. I detest all creatures named Ringo so the scum fuck hiding at the gas station would be the perfect body bag. I hid from Ringo by hiding in Ringo and started swinging. To say that I was less than impressed would be an understatement. It took more than 50 punches to kill Ringo, which isn't exactly surprising since the boxing gloves only do one damage. But I still wasn't at all happy about it. The small upside is that Ringo's body had been rendered flaccid by my attacks, but his eyes moving let me know that he could feel every punch I landed. He felt his bones shatter, his organs fail, and the life eventually get beaten out of him. Every person I kill will suffer a similar fate, including animals, so it's not actually that bad. I spoke to Trudy again, then went to talk to Joe Cobb about taking over the town. He had a funny feeling about me, which is a strange coincidence since I was just thinking about how funny it would be to beat him to death. The abysmal damage output made its presence known for the second time as I killed Cobb. The one thing the boxing gloves have going for them is the fatigue damage they deal. Every creature has a fatigue level that's determined by their base fatigue value, their endurance level, and the level they are. Once a creature takes enough fatigue damage, they're rendered unconscious, meaning they can't move, defend themselves, or fight back until their fatigue level restores itself, which happens automatically over time. This fatigue thing can give me the upper hand in one-on-one -on -one fights. It's still useful when dealing with a group, just less so. Because I did no research on fatigue prior to starting this playthrough, I went to the Hills of Good Springs to fight a few dogs before I pressed into the heart of the wasteland. The first coyote I beat lost its unconsciousness around the time it lost its life, and the second ran off before I could finish it. The next three went the same way, five dogs are dead and I have nothing to show for it. There was a sign near the Good Spring Cemetery that caught my eye. It said something about buried treasure being in the valley just over yonder. The sign was a lie because there was no treasure. Or maybe the treasure was the pleasure of a dozen giant rat scorpions sticking their tails deep inside my anus and letting their poison melt my insides like a child in a hot car. I survived that situation, punched another few dogs, uppercutted the ass of a powder ganger, leveled up, and had a whopping three perks to choose from. I chose Confirmed Bachelor because who cares at this point? As I got closer to Prim, I found some trash on the ground and was determined to find the culprit. I'll tell you now that that was a massive failure. The Mojave Litterbug is still at large as we speak. But it wasn't a total loss, as I got ambushed by a family of geckos and found out that I can, in fact, knock out animals. I took the long way around Prim, discovered some canyon wreckage and some signs with strange symbols on heaps of garbage, threw a teddy bear farther than anyone ever has before, and did significant damage to a convict on the road to Mojave Outpost. The convicts were weak. But the Jackal gang members, especially their disgusting leader, were tough. And by tough, I mean once I got them on the ground, they took a long time to die. A series of rights and lefts were all it took to end the mantises being held in lockup. Closer to Mojave Outpost, I faced my biggest challenge yet, Rad Scorpions. Instead of running, I stood my ground, 
readied my sock and boppers, and was more than willing to go down swinging. I nearly died of boredom from the amount of time it took to kill a single rad scorpion. If I had to kill the rest, I'd have broken out the Drano and let the party begin. I eventually made my way to Mojave Outpost, got some fresh foam stuffed inside my boxing gloves, got a job from Ranger Ghost, then another from Ranger Jackson, and was off to kill more of God's creatures. The giant ants took far more damage from my attacks than I had expected them to, making it trivial to slaughter an entire family of insects. I returned to Ranger Jackson, who rewarded me for a job well done with trash that I can't use. With the NCR being all but dead to me, I put my eyes on the prize and marched towards Nipton to see what the profanity had been going on out there. A lot more ants died on the way out there. And when I say a lot of ants, I mean a lot of ants. I wouldn't have said a lot of ants if I didn't mean a lot of ants. At Nipton Road Pit Stop, I became intimately familiar with something that would annoy me to no end throughout this run. Melee attacks. Specifically, people wielding melee weapons and blocking my attacks with them. I wish I could just kill whoever I want with no consequences without having to worry about them fighting back. This would be so much easier if people just killed themselves as soon as they saw me like people in real life want to do after they see my face. I was inches away from Nipton, ready to see what went wrong, but once again, my overwhelming desire to beat Oliver Swanick to death got the better of me. I'd like to tell you that I killed him then and there just outside of Nipton, but that would be a lie. I chased him for miles, across the Mojave, through deserts, until I finally caught up to him and got the least satisfying kill of all time. It looked like he tripped on a rock and died rather than being beaten to death. His soul may be free from my wrath, but we can still have some fun with his body before it goes cold. I stripped him naked, nice, and carried him back into the dry, dry desert as an offering to the scorpions. They did not accept. In fact, I think they found it quite offensive. I used their anger to my advantage by luring an army of rat scorpions back to Nipton to wipe out the Legion. That was a lie. I tried to lure one rat scorpion back to Nipton, but it lost interest before I got anywhere near the town. I was determined to rough him up though. I wasn't going to leave Nipton without Wolf Boy's hat. The legionaries are formidable as fuck in one-on-one -on -one scenarios. In a five-on-one -on -one scenario, where the one would be better off with Hulk hands than boxing gloves, they're just about the worst thing ever. Volpes in particular was troublesome to kill. I don't know how many times I punched him. I lost count when the numbers started getting big. I'm talking well into double-digit territory here. It didn't help that half the time I couldn't even hit him because one of the Legion recruits would get in my way. After a while, I escaped with my life, returned to Ranger Ghost to let him know about the unspeakable horrors that transpired in Nipton, fast traveled back to Nipton where the Legion had gotten smart and hightailed it out of there, and was off to Novak. I took a different route to Novak than I normally do because I had an opportunity to partially fulfill a childhood dream of becoming a train. I followed the train tracks for a good while until I found Prim Pass. I knew a blind deathclaw lurked nearby, and I was anxious to face my toughest foe yet. I feel confident in saying that I was seconds away from certain victory when the game froze and then crashed. I got fucked up real bad in round 2. The deathclaw hit me so hard my gloves fell off, which is why today's Mitten Squad Boxing Pro Tip is to dunk your hands in glue before you put on your gloves to ensure a snug fit. I wasn't going to let there be a round 3, because as far as I'm concerned, it's a draw. The Deathclaw scared me shitless when it appeared outside a cabin I'd broken into. I killed a group of Viper gunslingers and finally arrived at Novak. I tried to learn a new move from Captain Cripple, but he wasn't interested in sharing. Got a job from Boone and tried to get Genie to follow me out to the dinosaur. But for some reason, even after reading the bill of sale, I didn't have the option to ask her to follow me. So I did the next best thing, and got NCR's least favorite cripple to follow me outside to die. Boone was less than thrilled with my idea, so I gave him the honorable death he'd always wanted. Being knocked unconscious, then beaten to death in a dinosaur's mouth by an idiot wearing boxing gloves. My next stop was the Strip. Legion assassins tried to assassin me, which led to me resurrecting my Riot Scorpion plan from earlier by luring the Legion to Helios 1 where they could fight the NCR. Unfortunately, Lieutenant Haggerty lost her life during this little scuffle. The good news is that Lieutenant Haggerty is, in many ways, like Edgar. Lieutenant Haggerty can be anyone. Whoever wears the armor and calls themselves Lieutenant Haggerty is Lieutenant Haggerty. More vipers died, some fire ants died, some weird shit happened in the back of a truck, and I went inside Vault 11 for the first time maybe ever. The mantises inside did far more damage to me than I think it did they would. I knocked out a mouse, taunted a few more mantises with a possible dinner, and left the vault to find 188 trading post. The strip can wait. 
I recruited Veronica and headed for Hidden Bunker to take care of the Brotherhood ahead of schedule. I passed by Snuffles because I'd probably end up choking him with his foot if I tried to help him. Inside the bunker, once again the small things proved to be troublesome as Veronica just stood in the doorway and did nothing. After I pushed her inside, she got us inside the bunker, I spoke to Power Armor Guy, bought some stim packs, and met the Overseer, uh, Elder, same thing. I tried to kill McNamara, predictably failed, then reloaded a save and took a gander inside his pockets. Turns out he has a key card, and I snagged it. How he didn't feel my boxing gloves in his pockets is a mystery we're not meant to be able to comprehend. I figured that if I already got the keycard from one guy, there was no reason to not get the other two and fuck the entire bunker into hell. Veronica didn't appreciate my efforts to exterminate everything and everyone she ever loved, so I left her down there too and blew up the bunker. I then returned to the train tracks, but only temporarily because I had a boulder city to find. Lieutenant Monroe was similar to Lieutenant Haggerty in that they were both lieutenants. I bopped him one, then stood there taking dozens of shots from him. Watching him fire shot after shot into my chest to no avail was the most adorable thing I'd seen in a long time. I gave him a right and then a left and he went down. I don't know if it was my fist that knocked him out or him smacking the side of his head on a table. Either way, I took advantage of an unconscious military officer and beat him to death. I made it look like an accident by making him sit in the chair completely normally. The troopers inside were unhappy. I thought with the great cons being renowned for their toughness, they'd do well against the NCR. They did not. I tried to talk to Jessup, who was distracted by an NCR soldier who interrupted us rather rudely. I aided them outside by knocking out a few of the troopers, then beating them to death. Jessup gave me Benny's lighter, I got my first somewhat useful perk, and this time, for realsies, I was going to the strip. I got distracted by a hole in the ground, ventured inside a sewer, knocked out a few feral ghouls, then a rat, emerged through some sort of a pipe, and arrived at the gunrunners. The sexy robot inside didn't have any stim packs, so I bought some from Mick and or Ralph, spent longer than I should have fighting some thugs, scared off some little shit, replaced him with a beautiful trash can, and realized that I don't have enough caps to enter the strip. I sold an assortment of stuff and got inside the strip. My first stop was Gamora, where I was stripped of my weapon. I'm not lying when I say that I legitimately thought for about three minutes about how I'd proceed in dealing with the casinos without my boxing glove. Then I remembered that I could just go in arms blazing. So I left and went to meet Mr. House, who gave me a little insider info on Swank. Then I tried and failed to use that info against Swank. My only remaining option was to convince Benny that I'd meet him in his suite because I'd hoped to do things to his fanny, thanks to the confirmed bachelor perk. That didn't work, of course. So I had to politely leave, then immediately return and start beating bitches. The chairmen weren't especially tough. Most went down in fewer than eight punches. A few gamblers ironically fled from me by following me into Benny's suite, where they died. I leveled up after I killed a gambler and took arguably one of the most important perks I could get, Stonewall, which prevents me from being knocked down by melee attacks. This will come into play later on. I talked with Benny for a bit, he sent a few goons after me. I thought for the briefest of moments that things could maybe go my way, and I'd be able to vats all four of them and kill them each with a single punch. Didn't work. This old bird had some fight in her. Before I left the tops, I spent a little while going through all the rooms I could find and killing anyone who wouldn't fight back. I killed people who did fight back too. I just prefer those who didn't make me put any effort into it. Back outside the casino, I fast traveled back to 188 Trading Post to begin the long march towards Cottonwood Cove. Not a whole heck of a heap happened on the way out there. The only thing of note was that I killed two golden geckos. Someone smarter than me would be able to pull some sort of a golden glove comment out of that. At the fort, I told the Roman losers that nobody comes between me and my gloves. They tried to kill me, I pretty much ignored them all on my way into Caesar Salad's tent, only to discover, or remember, the phrasing's a bit of a gray area, that Caesar has the platinum chip, not Benny. Then I remembered that I'd be able to get my weapons back after Caesar gives me the platinum chip to destroy whatever's in the bunker below him. I didn't do that, I'm a loyal courier. I installed the upgrade for Mr. House, lied to Caesar about it, set Benny free, left him to die on his own terms, or mine, again, gray area, returned to Cottonwood Cove, got a face full of Malcolm Holmes, and retreated into the river which allowed me to fast travel back to the Lucky 38 and receive my payment from Mr. House. Oh, you're probably wondering about the robots in the bunker. They can be damaged, but they can't be knocked out because fatigue damage doesn't affect them in any way. Mr. House took me down to his basement, well he was about to, when I decided that I didn't want to watch his demonstration for the 8,000th time. 
So I went down to Mr. House's real basement, where he spends most of his time these days. It took a few swings, but he eventually died. I stuffed a fork in his chest cavity and left the Lucky 38 to go get Yes Man's nonsense started. He took me down to the basement. I left the room to do something, probably food related, and when I came back, I'd been swept off my feet and was back in the penthouse with a giant smiling face staring into my soul. I then had the usual assortment of tasks to complete. Meet the Boomers, Great Cons, Omertas, White Gloves, and Brotherhood. The Brotherhood has long since been destroyed, and the Omertas want nothing to do with me. I went to the Ultralux first, to kill as many of them as was necessary to ensure that I'd never have to deal with them again. Next were the Great Cons. I took the road from Good Springs, rather than going north of the Strip and following the road south. Along the way, I fought a family of Cazadors, managed to knock one out and pummel it to death, then escaped the rest of the hive by seeking shelter in Bonnie Springs. Almost. The game crashed before I reached the town. Upon loading my most recent save, I spent longer than I should have, killing the big corners and mantises across the way from the entrance to Red Rock Canyon. I could have just ignored the Great Cons, but instead, I chose to do something different. Not only did I not kill them all, I went to work for them. My first task was simple enough, find Anders, and report back to the Great Cons about his well-being. They thanked me for freeing him, I delivered a mildly suspicious package to Don Hostetler, there was another crash, I delivered the package again, and was sent to Vault 3 to deliver some happy drugs. I think I fucked up somewhere between arriving at the vault and beating Motor Runner to death. Before I left Red Rock, I'd been given some Great Khan's armor. I'm now thinking that I was supposed to wear that armor to get inside the vault peacefully. I think that because I didn't wear the armor and ended up killing most of the fiends inside the vault. And some were tough, especially those who used melee weapons, which were, like, a lot of them. When I approached Motor Runner, neither him nor his dogs seemed happy to see me. He died, I failed the quest, went back to the Crimson Caravan to kill Alice McLafferty, killed a few Brahmin, and arrived at Nellis to meet the Boomers. I opted for the simple solution to the Boomers problem, where I just kill Pearl and then run as far away as I possibly can. And good news, I found more train tracks. I returned to the Ultralux because, believe it or not, I hadn't killed Mortimer yet, then returned to Yes Man to get the show on the road, installed the thing at the place, and was off to Hoover Dam. The push inside was less of a push and more of a slip and slide because I ignored those shooting at me on my way inside the offices, bonked the absolute hell out of two NCR soldiers, installed Yes Man, flipped a switch, and eventually arrived at the Legates camp. I'll go ahead and tell you now that I went into this rather unprepared. I actually didn't prepare at all. The Praetorian guards are tough, deal a lot of damage with their ballistic fists, and without the speech check, to fight the Legate 1v1 quick scopes only, there are a lot of guards to contend with as well. I fucked up again, big time. It quickly became abundantly clear that I had no hope of beating the Legate. X-Men would become an Emmy Award winning film franchise before I ever killed the Legate. So I succumbed to my baser instincts and went back to square one. If I ever hoped to have a chance of beating Linus, I'd need a stupid amount of stim packs. So I took my near 12,000 caps to the New Vegas Medical Clinic and bought all the stim packs they had. Then I waited for a few days and bought more. Then more. Then more. By the time I left, I had 58 plus 19 total stim packs. But I still wasn't ready. I wanted to level up before I faced the Legate again. Mick and Ralph were first. Then an assortment of Freeside residents. Then I arrived at the Old Mormon Fort. Let me tell you, the people in there put up one hell of a fight. If it's any consolation prize, they didn't suffer for very long. From the time I landed my first punch to when all the bodies lie naked on the ground, less than five minutes had passed. I was almost ready. There was just one more thing I needed. Well, two things actually. Like many weapons in New Vegas, the boxing gloves have a unique variant that are better in every way. The golden gloves are located in the Lucky 38's casino. I snagged them, saw how shiny they were, returned to Yes Man, went back to Hoover Dam, fought my way inside the offices, flipped Yes Man's happy switch, pushed through the Centurions on the way to the Legate's camp, killed a good amount of Legion soldiers with the normal boxing gloves, then finally donned the golden gloves, pumped myself full of drugs, and took the fight to the Legate. Even with the golden gloves, an asshole full of drugs, strength at 10, unarmed at 100, and the piercing strike perk that makes unarmed weapons ignore 15 points of an enemy's damage threshold, this was by no means easy. The golden gloves do help a lot though. The improvements they provide over the standard boxing gloves are not just cosmetic. They're twice as likely to land a critical hit and do 40% more fatigue damage. Which means, knocking out Praetorians is much easier and they die much quicker. Still, there's a lot of them to deal with in addition to the Legate. 
whose fatigue level is among the highest of any creature in the game. I decided to focus on the guards before I dealt with the legate, since they'd have to be killed anyway. After several minutes of glorious beatings, it came down to Rocky and the Monster of the East. He put up a hell of a fight against me, but he was knocked out just like everyone else, and even with him lying unconscious in the dirt, it still took nearly 90 seconds of non-stop punching to kill him. I got a few glamour shots, used almost every drug I had left, because nothing says victory like overdosing after a war, confronted General Oliver, beat him to death, and beat Fall of New Vegas with only boxing gloves. And that's going to do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Full of New Vegas by only using boxing gloves. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you did not enjoy the video or did not learn anything. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server through a link in the video description. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.